Do you need an ND filter for your new drone? Let's find out. Regardless whether you're flying a DJI Mini 4 Pro or the Mini 3 Pro or any other fixed aperture drone, you probably ask yourself that question numerous times, struggling a little bit finding a clear answer to this. I can help you understand the fundamentals of why, when and where you need to apply filters to enhance your footage, including photography. I will be using the DJI Mini 4 Pro with the Mega Limited Edition 16 filter pack from Free. Well. The theory is the same regardless of the drone that you're flying, so keep watching. Freewell has sponsored this video and they have agreed as part of the deal that one of you subscribers can win a set of filters for the drone of your choice. There is a lot of misconceptions about ND filters, what they do and when you actually need them. On top of this, there's also many different kinds of filters. Just take this Freewell kit as an example that includes both regular ND filters, polarized versions, a CPL filter, as well as a few additional creative filters like the snow mist filter for snow landscapes and a light pollution filter for night time recordings around artificial light. Making matters even worse, the objective of the fillers are different whether you're into video or photography. It's not difficult, so hang in there. By the end of this video, you will understand the difference as well as see some real life examples of the fillers in use. Let's start with the video part. What is the neutral density or ND filter? When you're recording video, especially around daylight, the amount of light available will make the shutter speed of your camera extremely high to prevent your footage from being overexposed. Just to clarify, the shutter speed is the ratio between when the sensor is active and non-active. With the fixed aperture drones, there's no way of reducing the amount of light that go through the camera lens like if the drone had a variable aperture. Here you can just close the mechanical arrangement in front of the camera to achieve this. Because we don't have that feature, we need something else. This is where the fillers come into play as they are used to reduce the amount of light that reaches the sensor. And for ND fillers, that is the sole purpose of what they do. As the name neutral density tells us, this is a neutral filter that does not add or subtract anything to improve the quality of your footage in terms of uh, coloring or saturation. At least that's the theory, but in real life use you might see a slight shift in color temperature, especially if you're using the darker ones. Look at this example showing the Mini 4 Pro recordings with and without filter, and in this case it's a ND32 only corrected to match the exposure levels. As you can see, there's not much difference. The ND filters included in this kit are labeled with a number 16 to 1000, and they are correlated to a unit called stop. One stop is equal to either halving or doubling the amount of light. In other words, if you're increasing with one stop, that would mean that you would get 50% less light. If you use the polarized version of the filters, they can help you in some scenarios to boost the saturation of your footage. They are not as straightforward to use as uh, the pure ND filters, so more about that later in the video. So why do we need any filters for drone video? The side effect of a high shutter speed is that your footage will look choppy and jerky when it includes motion. By reducing the shutter speed, you will introduce something called motion blur. And if that is used in the right amount, it will be more pleasant to the eye. But the key is motion. So if you're flying high in the sky at low speed, the benefit of using fillers is very limited. Let me just show you by flying over a field with sheep. As you can see, the footage looks perfectly fine without a filter if we stay away from the ground and keep motion slow. If we get closer to the ground, you can see the footage is a lot more harsh and jerky if you look at the sheep on the side. It's still usable, some would say, but it's only getting worse with increased motion speeds, as you can see in this exaggerated example with an outside panning motion. Even with filters, I would not recommend that motion because it looks bad regardless. But this was to show you clearly what it is that I'm looking for. You can use filters to make your footage more smooth. If you have been watching videos around filters, you probably came across a term that's called the 180 degree rule, which is derived from the old days using analog cameras, but it can still be used today to add the right amount of motion blur to your footage. Motion blur is adding blur between each frame of the video, making everything more smooth. And it's being introduced gradually with slower shutter speeds. The 180 degree shutter rule defines that we should try and keep the shutter speed at the double of the frame rate. If we replay the sequence with the active tracking using the ND32, you can judge for yourself. But if we freeze the frame, it becomes more apparent that the motion blur has been introduced 
on the clip with the ND32. This is a good rule of thumb, but sometimes you need to sacrifice this ratio to keep proper exposure. There is basically only three things that you can adjust on a digital camera, and that is aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. They call it in something called the exposure triangle. ISO is the digital magnification, and because this is bright daylight with plenty of light, this will often stay at the darkest setting at 100. The challenge is now that we have no way of reducing light while flying, as smaller drones from DJI are fixed aperture drones, meaning we cannot use the aperture as this one is fixed. So with the aperture locked and the ISO set to the darkest possible setting, you only have the option to use ND fillers to get the shutter speed down. I find it really difficult in real life to keep the shutter speed the double of the frame rate because the light is constantly shifting. So I often use a pragmatic approach. I mount a filter and then I switch the drone into pro mode in this way, I can read out the shutter speed that the drone has decided to use. That might be different when you're airborne, but at least it will give you some sort of an idea if the shutter speed is more than double of the frame rate. Don't be totally obsessed by hitting this ratio spot on. You'll be perfectly fine using slightly higher shutter speeds. Sometimes with the filter mounted, I just flick it back into auto and let the drone handle the rest. You will see if you have chosen a filter that is too dark and you decide to lock the shutter speed on 1 or 60, the ISO will go up to compensate for the low exposure. And this could lead to quality issues as higher ISO often introduces a noise into the image. If you somehow end up in a situation where your shutter speed is uh, less than the double of the frame rate, you might end up in a situation where you introduce excessive motion blur. Let me demonstrate that by using an ND1000 filter that's included in uh, the kit from Freewell. And this is what happens in this scenario. So what the drone will do is to reduce Use the shutter speed as much as possible equal to the frame rate. It's really not possible to go lower than that. Then it will start boosting the ISO to get proper exposure. As you can see, the recording has a lot of motion blur around the tips of the wings. Definitely too much to my taste and makes the footage look blurry. If you realize that you are mounted a filler that's way too bright after you have taken off, you can simply bump the frame rate, let's say from 30 to 60 FPS. Then you can use a shutter speed of 1 or 120 to get the same result. These are my filter recommendations for different scenarios during bright daylight. What do polarized filters do? The benefit of polarized filters is that they boost the saturation of the footage. They can be used for cutting down glare and reflections, adding cinematic quality to your visuals. The polarized versions of Freewell filters are identified by the red ring in the front allowing you to adjust the intensity of the polarization effect. This kit includes polarized filters from ND16 to ND256. But know that the polarization effect depends on the angle towards the sun. In the front of the filter, you can see a V and an H marker that you need to change if you change the orientation of the camera, so you know your baseline. Let me give you an easy example as we can rotate the camera while it's airborne of the DJI Mini 4 Pro. You can see the difference in the look of the footage as the angle of the filter changes in relation to the sun. Let's look at some real life examples and go back to the scenario with the active track. Here you can see the car is uh, being filmed with no filter against uh, ND32 with polarizing effect. If we freeze the frame, you can still see that we have the motion blur present, but what you probably also would notice is that uh, at least in this scenario, the colors are a lot more rich. It can be a little bit fiddly messing around with polarizing filters when you're airborne to produce a consistent result. To give you the full picture, let's do a comparison of no filter, ND32, ND32 with polarizer. And this looks something like this. If we look at them one by one, the one without the filter, the footage looks really flat. Then it starts to get, come a little bit more alive uh, with the, the ND32. Maybe a little bit too much with the polarized version. This is a difficult task to perform as uh, with active track, there's no guarantee that the drones will fly the same route every time. But this should give you an idea. There are a CPL or circular pole filter included in the kit as well, which is doing the same, cutting down the reflections, but without reducing the light. The included UV filter safeguard your lens from harmful ultraviolet rays, and it can be used as a substitute for your regular lens protection provided with your drone. Let's touch upon filters for your drone photography as they can be useful in some scenarios. One scenario is that if you practice long exposure photography where you will lower 
your shutter speed to extremely low levels to introduce softness uh, into your image. This is very difficult to do with video, but it works really well with photography. Just know in general, having a too low shutter speed might ruin your drone image, leaving it unsharp and blurry. You can, as we did with video, use the polarization effect of the filters to cut down reflections in your image if that is what you're looking for. I would claim in 99% of the cases, you don't need filters for your photography, unless you want to introduce an artistic twist or enhance certain features of your image. Just look at this image that I took from the backside of Fredensborg Castle. I've used no filters at all. This is all done in post-production. For those that wants to take the creative approach, Freewell has decided to include a set of speciality fillers, a snow mist one fourth and a light pollution filler. I only played around with these fillers very shortly and I'll just show you a few examples. According to Freewell, the snow mist filter should add a dreamy and ethereal ambience look to your footage. Where the light pollution filter counters the effect from artificial light, allowing you to capture stunning nightscapes with remarkable clarity. If that is the case with the examples provided, I will let you decide. Both types of filters is something you can take advantage of with video and photography. The filler kit is for DJI Mini 4 Pro and is not compatible with any other mini drone. But as mentioned in the beginning of the video, you will have a chance to win a set of filters for the drone of your choice. But you will need to act promptly as the giveaway will only run for 72 hours after the release of this video. To enter, you need to be a subscriber of my YouTube channel, a subscriber of the Freewell YouTube channel, like this video, write in the comments the drone that you want a filler set for, and where you're from. I will pick the winner randomly among the comments and the winner will be notified directly in the original comment. Make sure to pay attention to the verified badge behind my name. All others are scam. I will not ask you to go to all different places and do all sorts of stuff to win the prize. The winner must respond within 24 hours, otherwise I will pick a new one. So that was a lot of stuff to comprehend. If you have any additional questions about any fillers, then make sure to leave them below. And I really hope that you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.